Hey guys, welcome back to the Espresso Outlet YouTube channel. My name is Barrett and we have a new machine that I know a couple people have been asking about. A couple months ago we came out with the Turin Legato, we had a couple teasers, and we mentioned that there was going to be three different machines. So this is the largest of the three machines. We're going to do an unboxing on it today. I've not used it, I've not seen it, so this will be kind of a first for all of us here. Uh, there is a third machine, is, is called the Sonata. So you have the Sonata, it's the smallest, you have the Legato, it's kind of the middle machine. And then you have this, um, it's, we're calling it the Turin Capriccio. On the box, you're going to see that it says CRM 3200D. So the manufacturer is Karima. They've been around in Asia for quite a while, and they're just gaining a lot of popularity just throughout the world. So we're the main importer for these for the United States. And so far, I've just really been loving my Legato. So uh, we're going to try out these other two machines, but today we're just going to open up this Capriccio. So to get started, we're going to cut these straps. Just have my pocket knife. Let's cut these straps. And it looks like the top of the box just kind of lifts off, which is really nice. That way you don't have to try to wrestle it out of the espresso machine, or out of the box, the machine out of the box. So carefully slide this box off. It did take just a little bit. It is a nice tight fit. And you can see, kind of a first glimpse at this machine. I'm gonna get rid of all these straps and get some stuff out of the way so that we can kind of start digesting some of the items that are in the box. I always say be careful because a lot of times they tuck certain things in, which you can see off to the side here. Looks like we have like a drip tray riser and our tamper. I'm gonna put these off to the side. Make sure there's nothing else that's gonna fall out. Let's just lift it out of this base. So we have two styrofoam sides. Looks like they've done a really nice job of packaging it. There are a few more things in the front. So here is the machine. Lift the cover off, and let's take a first real good look at it. Looks like we have a drain line so that we can plumb it, I'm assuming just for like just the drain. Have a nice group head cleaning brush. So these are always handy. You have a little scoop for your detergent, and I always have a couple of these around, so that's kind of nice that it came with it. It appears to be a drain line. So let's take a quick look at that. There's a little collector in the bottom so you can connect it. And if you're just wanting to use this as like no drain line, it has this rubber plug. So I'm probably just gonna leave that in and not plumb this machine. It has quite a bit of room. It has an ample amount of room for just a drip tray in general. So that's kind of nice. And it is kind of a plastic body, but it's like a very premium feeling and looking plastic. It has this nice powdery look to it. Um, it's really elegant. I'm kind of really digging it so far. Now there is some protective film on the front. We'll take that off here in a minute. And instruction manual. So we'll put that off the side. We probably don't need that. And there's more protective film on top. Let's look at the water tank. So it has a door on the top and the tray lifts out and it actually looks like the Legato tank. You can maybe go look real quick. Okay, so yeah, I was right. It's kind of like the Legato tank, except with no lid. So this is from my Legato. So they've kind of standardized on parts. It's been a nice tank for the Legato. It just kind of clicks into place. And we'll just get that filled up with water and start preheating. Okay, let's see what else is in the box. So I don't know why all these companies, they're pretty adamant about including this plastic tamper. It's kind of worthless, but if you have nothing, It'll get you by until you can get something just kind of inexpensive. So you got a coffee scoop and a really inexpensive tamper. You're probably never gonna use this. And it's not like it's the nicest tamper in the world, but again, it's gonna get you going. So it does come with a nicer tamper. So you get both of those. 
And I'm assuming these are the porta filters or porta filter, most likely. So it is a single porta filter. It's the same as the Legato. And it comes with a couple different options for baskets. So that's always nice when they give you a couple options. I feel like a lot of companies, they include the single spout. No one ever uses a single spout. I think we're gonna get some bottomless because I mean, that's a really hot thing to have. Uh, it looks like, let's just see what baskets they have because there's three baskets in with this one, which I'm a little surprised by. I'm wondering if that's an error, but it looks like there's two singles and a double. And I think the reason why they did a single is you can use one as a back flush blind if you choose, and then you're probably just gonna use the double for your day to day. So came with a few. Let's plug this into the group head real quick. So it just fits in, it's like a standard espresso machine. You can see there's quite a bit of room between the drip tray and the top. So I'm assuming that's why they gave this little cup riser. The cup riser just fits in like so. It has some ball bearings in the base to prevent this thing from just sliding all around. So you can just kind of prop that on like so. And I'll probably just leave mine on. And that looks pretty sharp. So overall, just pulling this out, it's a very nice looking machine. We're gonna get all this plastic peeled off here in a minute and we'll do kind of just a couple close-ups of the machine itself. We have our steam right here and our steam arm, it's fully articulating. Let's see the steam holes, let's just unscrew it. So it is a three tip and we are, if you want like some other styes, uh, we are trying to get a couple extra because a lot of people for whatever reason really just wanting the single hole so we'll give the option eventually, but for now, it comes stock with the three hole. The feet are adjustable, we'll get those leveled out. Uh, let's just get this thing plugged in and heat it up. So give me a minute to, let's heat this thing up. Okay, so right now you can hear the pump is running. I did fill up the water tank. I gave it a nice rinse with a little bit of soap and got it all cleaned up before we filled it up with water. Make sure to use softened water, that's very important. Test your water if you're not sure. This is your first espresso machine. It can cause a lot of damage very quickly with the heat of the espresso machine ruining your boilers. So you can tell it ran for quite a while and it's gonna do that when you first turn it on. Um, sometimes I, I do tell people there is kind of a timeout on a lot of these pumps. So usually if it doesn't start heating within a few minutes, uh, maybe turn it back off and turn it back on just so that that pump isn't continually running. But all it's doing is filling up the boilers for the first time use. So that first time it's gonna be like, what's going on? Uh, that really should be the only time that you have this experience with just filling up the boilers for the first time. You are probably going to want to pull this water tank out, back out, fill it up because it's going to drain that water tank substantially filling up these boilers for the first time. So we are going to just continue to let this heat up for a few minutes. And then we're going to take a quick look at just some of the functions of the machine itself. Okay, so that pretty much completes setting up this machine for the first time. Now I didn't do it on camera, but I did peel off. There was a protective coating in the front, on the top, and on the back, just to protect the metal as it's cut out on the machines. So it does this peel off. You may need to use just like a little bit of ammonia and like a towel. Um, shouldn't need any goo gone. It's not like a sticky type adhesive on them. So we are gonna take a closer look at the front of the machine. I wanna show you some of the features up close. This is my first experience with this machine today, so we're not gonna go over any of the technical features. We're just gonna just take a look at it. I mean, it's a first impressions video, and it's really just kind of the first time of taking a look at it. So let's go up front and just take a closer look of the actual controls. Just kind of starting off on this side, we have the steam wand off to the right, and it has this, this fully articulating steam arm. Very nice, you can pull it off the side, you can steam in the front. Nice room for just like a milk pitcher, so. Really kind of a huge fan of that already. Let's check out some of the steaming power. I mentioned it does come with a standard three hole tip. And since this is a dual boiler machine, getting quite a bit of nice steam. Doesn't sound very wet, looks pretty decent. Uh, we are gonna do some more testing on that on a day when I have some milk at the shop. Um, let's go to the other side real quick. So one thing that I missed when I unboxed this is there's actually a water wand. And it's not like as articulating as the steam arm, but it does move back and forth a little bit. To trigger that, there's a button on the top, just has a little water droplet. And you can preheat cups, you can rinse portafilters, make Americanos, and 
it does have an adjustable time feature, so it's just me um, using a timer to measure out how much water is dispensed out of that. So very cool feature, especially in something of this price point. You do have your pressure gauge. This pressure gauge is not for the boilers itself. It's actually going to be for the puck pressure on top, which is probably gonna be a little bit more important to know when you are pulling a shot and you just kind of want to check out your pressure on that shot and just how is it flowing. Uh, it gives nice feedback, so that's a nice feature to have. Um, I'm used to it like on my E61s being kind of in the front, so that's gonna be, it's not uncommon to see it there, but it's um, not front and center like I'm used to. Next we have the control panel. It's just a very simple control panel. So we have our power button right there. You hold it to turn on and off. Uh, it does have a light indicator for when your steam boiler is ready for steam. You have two pre-programmable buttons. So you can do, it's not necessarily a single shot and a double shot, but you can have um, different profiles set up and they are programmable. We'll go over that some other day. You have, what I usually use is just kind of like the manual feature. So you hit it, it turns on, you hit it again, it turns off. And then last but not least, you have that water droplet for your water tap. And you can kind of see off the side, here's the knob for the steam. This is a nice feeling knob. So just basic knob for an espresso machine, but it's front and center, works really nice. Seems pretty ergonomical. Um, that's just really simplistic controls on this machine so far. Uh, I do want to show a couple more things real quick. I usually get a few questions just right off the bat about cup clearance. I know on some machines like the Los Bacial, there's just really not that much cup clearance, especially if you're going to use a small scale. So I have an Akaya right here. We do have this riser on, which is not uncommon to see on a lot of machines. Um, I'm probably going to leave it on because there is pretty big distance between the spouts and that grate. But we have our Akaya scale right here. And let's just start with an espresso cup. You do have plenty of clearance. It's a little tight, but it does fit perfectly. And then we have our just kind of like a standard latte cup, and it also fits. Now, if for whatever reason you're using like a much larger scale, like I got this Time War, and you don't want to use that stand, there's quite a bit of room to utilize a lot larger, larger scale. So if you don't have all these scales laying around and that's something that you wanna do, I mean, that's something that you're going to be able to do. It's probably gonna be quite awkward if you have this riser and a larger scale. It's not gonna sit very well. I mean, it might work okay, but I mean, you can kind of tell it's not working very good. And the clearance isn't quite as good because this is a much thicker scale. So just letting you know on that, like if you're gonna run a big scale, I'd probably run it without that riser. And it looks really nice, it's really simple. Uh, you don't even really need to run a scale at all, but I always have at least one or two people ask about cut clearance. So I am excited to pull a shot on this, but one thing that I just should have mentioned a bit ago in the video, this does come with the dual spout porta filter, but if you are looking for that little bit of additional clearance, these, this is an E61 style group head. So you can just purchase an aftermarket E61 Porta filter like I have here. We have this on our website. Just search bottomless E61 58 and it'll pull right up. So it is 58. Uh, I've mentioned in some other videos about like the Legato. You might find some on like Amazon that work in like Gaja. They're usually pretty cheap, like 20 bucks. I really don't recommend the Gaja one because it's a narrower porta filter and the tabs are a little bit smaller. And what I've heard, at least online, is it can slide out like as it's brewing. So it could be kind of dangerous. Um, if you're just looking for just any of the 58 millimeter, not a big deal as long as it has these straight tabs that go straight across. The Gaja ones, they go at an angle. So these these straight tabs, E61, and you should be good to go. Uh, I do recommend using a pretty decent basket. The one that comes with it is a nice basket. It does have the ridges in it, and it's more of a tapered basket where I've just really become accustomed to these straight wall like VST and IMS offer so really enjoy a more premium basket but let's get this thing going i am going to use the bottom list just for fun um i have this let me grab it guatemalan from good brothers i've been enjoying it it's nice just very good coffee it's snickerdoodle marshmallow kind of get that brown sugar and marshmallow kind of some more undertones to it uh, let's do a little bit of puck prep i have the df83 v today 
We're on setting about, I don't know, 17. Hopefully we're dialed close enough and let's get this going. Okay, so I've gone ahead and just pre-weighed out 18 grams of beans. We're gonna throw it in the grinder. Have it set on, I don't know, 1,000 RPM, it really shouldn't matter. Since we're doing espresso, a little bit slower is nice, but with those fine particles, it's really not a real big deal to run it like super slow. These variable speed are really not meant to make, like run really slow for espresso. So we're done with that. I like to take a WDT tool and just kind of mix, pre-mix the grounds before I do my puck prep. Kind of using a blacked out setup today with the all the black scales and tamper and grinder and machine. So it's kind of a lot of fun. Grab my black milk picture. I don't have any milk. Only thing that's not is this aluminum dosing ring. So we're gonna dump those grounds in and then I like to WDT and just level out our bed. Break up any clumps. There's really not many clumps out of this grinder but just the way that it falls in, get it nice and distributed so that we have a nice, even, lovely pulled shot. And a quick tamp. Nice and clean, smells amazing. You can kind of just smell the graham cracker in it. it smells awesome. Lock it in the group head like so. Ran just a hair fast, but it looks really good. Okay, so I think that's about all today on this Turin Capriccio. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe on this because we're gonna be doing more videos on this machine specifically, as well as the Legato and the Sonata. So if you're looking for a new espresso machine or possibly a grinder, more information on this DF64V, for example, we're gonna have some cool stuff coming out. But thanks for watching. Uh, let's give this a quick try. Just a normal, mm, this very classic espresso. Um, pretty acidic, but in a good way. I mean, it's definitely the beans. Um, just very well rounded. Uh, this, the temperature that this machine has been putting out, I pulled about three or four shots getting this going today. And I, I feel like the temperature is spot on. It's not too hot, not too cold. Sometimes when you get that really hot, uh, you get that really high astringency and bitterness. So this is just like, it's spot on, nice, bright, espresso shot so thanks for watching for more information visit our website www.espressooutlet.net and we'll be posting the price here relatively soon as well as more information about the other machines so again i appreciate you watching